Welcome to Hawkshaw, as we meet today, praising God for all he is and all that he's done. And thank you for joining us today uh, as we do our first web worship during this unusual situation with coronavirus, uh, struggling and working through our, our towns and our cities across the world, across the nation, and even in Hawkshaw. Uh, and so we pray that you would know God's peace and his love now. Uh, and as we gather for worship today, that you would be able to meet with him wherever you are. Asking all that in Jesus' name. In our worship today, we're going to have a couple of songs. Uh, then there'll be a reading and a talk from me and some prayers. Uh, and then a, a song as we close. Uh, that opportunity to talk to God wherever you are. And to know that you're part of his worldwide community uh, of love and care. Uh, and held by him. So, as we start, shall we sing?
Next, a uh, reading from John's Gospel, chapter 2, beginning at verse 1, uh, which is Jesus and his mother at Cana in Galilee. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realise where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after. The guests have had too much to drink, but you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. On Mothering Sunday, it's great to give thanks for those people we love, and in particular, for the gift of life, which for every single one of us came through our mothers. Now, I know that not every mum is perfect, but happily, most mums manage, sometimes really against the odds, to care for their children and to have enough compassion left over to care for others around them too. Our Bible reading from John's Gospel gives a gentle insight into Jesus' relationship with his mother, Mary. According to tradition, by the time we come to the Gospels, Joseph had died. And that would have been sometime after, when Jesus was 12, when he went to the temple. Uh, and we find his parents then looking everywhere for him when he was lost. And before the time, when Jesus calls his followers to follow and learn from him. Uh, with Jesus aged about 30. Uh, so it's most likely that Mary was used to asking for her oldest son's help in certain situations. And so it was on this particular day. Weddings in Jesus' day were week-long occasions with visits from house to house, with toasts drunk and hospitality shared. They, as today, were a great time of celebration, but they were also important links between families in communities and neighbourhoods. Our understanding is that running out of wine was more than just a social gaffe. It potentially put the whole wedding in jeopardy. In Jesus' day, a failure in hospitality was a failure to honour the other party. So when the wine ran out at the wedding, the bridegroom's family had a real problem. Mary must have got wind of this at an early stage and known that Jesus could do more than he had previously let on. There is a faith and trust in her instructions to the servants, as she says, do whatever he tells you, that indicates a real sense that Mary was certain that Jesus could overcome this dilemma. So how do we react to difficult situations like the ones we're facing at the present time? Mary's example tracks a course that holds firmly onto faith, but is also highly practical in outlook. And so in faith, we trust God for the things that we need. We trust him for every day of our lives, even though we don't know whether that will be long or short. And we trust our Heavenly Father that he is good and that he bring, brings us through to a better place, either on earth or in heaven. And that sense of trusting God is very much ours to grasp in these difficult days of coronavirus. If we are, or have relatives who are particularly vulnerable, then we'll be acutely conscious of our sense of frailty. But no one knows how they will react to this virus, so all of us may find ourselves in need of Jesus' presence and love in the days ahead. But Mary also points us to a practical care for those in need, a sharing of her faith and trust 
in God's Son, a real compassion for those in trouble, even when that was going to be a challenge to Jesus' anticipated timetable. Caring for others is costly. It means that we let go of our rights, such as the freedom to go where we want, or schools looking after our children, or our favourite activities, or holidays, or people to spend time with, even our healthy bank balance. We let go of these things in order to help those in need, to keep other people safe, to show and to live out the love of our Father God. And it's as we do, we find that Jesus goes ahead of us, bringing the resources of heaven down to our family situation, our community, our hospitals, our homes. When he turned water into wine, Jesus went for it big time. Something like 180 gallons of water transformed into the best wine, we learn. Enough to see out the wedding and plenty more besides. Enough to sell and provide funds for this, for this cash-strapped family, for the start of their married life together. And so at his command, the floodgates of heaven are open to bless those who call on him in unexpected ways. For us, as for them, it doesn't mean that life thereafter was entirely plain sailing. But they went on their way knowing that God was on their side and able to act and to help. And that sort of faith, will change the world for the better every time. So perhaps our best response is to pray, to ask God into our situations, to let him be at work in our hearts, to help us be the people we can be at this time as we put our trust in him. So shall we pray? Lord, as we face an uncertain future, Please help us to know your peace and your presence with us today. Help those in need around us and help us to trust in you so that we can be unselfish in our actions. May you be glorified in the days ahead as our faith grows and bears fruit for your kingdom. And so, Lord, be with us today, we pray. In Jesus' name and power we ask this. Amen. And perhaps now we'll pray together some more as Joe leads us in some prayers. Let us pray. On this Mothering Sunday, we give thanks for our mothers. We thank you that they have given us life and for the many sacrifices they have made for us. For those who are no longer with us, we thank you for their lives. For those who we cannot be with in person at this time, we pray for your blessing, peace and comfort. For those who are near, we thank you. We know that for many people there are emotions of sadness, loss and grief tied up with motherhood and childhood. And we pray that by your spirit you would bring healing and wholeness. We thank you for our local community in Holcombe and Hawkshaw for the way that people have come together to help others this week. We pray that as the church has had to close the doors of its building, your church, the people, would come to life in the community, living out the fullness of life that you intend us to have and to be to those around us. And so we pray for our nation. We pray for wisdom and discernment for all our leaders. We pray that all those in power would act for the good of everyone. We pray for unity across all spheres of our society. And we pray for those battling on the front line against this virus for strength to continue day after day. And for your protection for them and their families. Lord, many people are anxious, fearing the unknown. Please give them your peace. For those who are sick, we pray for your healing. 
for the vulnerable, we pray for your protection. And whilst our nation suffers, we know that our suffering will not compare to that which much of the world will suffer as the virus spreads. We pray for those in refugee camps, those living in war zones, those who are in places already suffering from extreme poverty. Lord, in your mercy, spare these people from further suffering. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Church's prayer for today, the third Sunday of Lent. Eternal God, give us insight to discern your will for us, to give up what harms us, and to seek the perfection we are promised in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our last song today is one that speaks of God's blessing on us and recognising all the good things that we have, even in difficult times. Uh, and so as we come to the end of this Mother's Day service, uh, being able to worship God together, uh, we continue to pray for his blessing on each of us, his love for us uh, and his work in our world.
thanks today to Ruth, Caleb, Joe and Isaac for leading us in worship uh, and thanks to all those who are working hard in the fight against the coronavirus. And my prayers for each of you in all that you face in the days ahead uh, as so much of what is normal uh, and the things that we take for granted are challenged. May you know the peace and grace of God at this time. And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and guard your minds. And may his grace flow through you into his world. And the blessing of God, the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen.